This is no man's land, a brutal state of decay too difficulty mod that makes lethal zones seem like it's infested with puppies and kittens. Instead of the regular 30 hearts in lethal, this mod has 72. There's 5 play cards by here? What the shit? But they're also insanely strong. You know that black heart curveball people have read it have been moaning about? All 72 of these hearts are blacker than my soul, and are gonna take an insane amount of beating. Play cart gases are bigger and will set you on fire if you're not quick enough, as well as hordes being much, much bigger from the start. And all the zombies are plague, which, as you'll see, makes farming samples so much easier. Let's meet the three heroes we'll be taking with us. You may recognize two from the red how long cleaning up the nation team, welcome Hastings and Stuart. But also Nichols, potentially a dark horse considering he's got a blank fifth skill. Our first mission, as you'd probably expect, is to find a new home, which may be harder than normal as zombie spawns are much greater, and I want to stay quiet seeing as there's also plenty of freaks around. I guess Hastings and Stuart didn't get the memo. Together we eliminate the rest of the horde, and by some miracle don't get swamped by blood ferals, which has got to be said, great success. So I hop the wall into our new home and start eliminating the undead. Thankfully it doesn't seem like there's an increased spawn here at least. So I crush every skull I can and claim the base as our own. I can then immediately start cleaning up the shit and head out to loot some supplies. You can usually find some valuable stuff in the beehives next door, but literally all I find is chemicals. I'm obviously not complaining, chemicals will be needed for the upgraded infirmary I'll be building. It's just funny how I found three different chemicals in three different beehives. In this little red garage I find a fuel resource, which I split open to pocket that fuel can, which means I can get the starter card up and running. If I could also find a toolkit I'd be laughing. I also climb the billboard and have a scout about before making my way over to a nearby garage that should have building supplies. And would you look at that? It certainly does. Assuming you count a package of duct tape as building supplies. Which of course you would, why the hell wouldn't you? But the problem is, you see, I start to get greedy. I should have just dropped them at home and start building the infirmary. But I wanted to be efficient and only go home with a boot full of supplies. What a bloody moron. Also, fuck you, Screamer. Not only am I now injured, I've got friends inbound. Oh my god, right, that is quite a lot of them. But good thing I brought mollies. But in all honesty, that molly throw wasn't my best. Issue. Issue issue issue. When in doubt, Molly the problem. When is setting things on fire ever caused a bigger issue? Never is the answer to that question. Come on, there we go. Look at that chat. Look at that. That's just what we call professional gamer. That is how we do it. Just a final few to clean up, then we can start searching the creepy garage. Very, very slowly for once. I get my building mats, this time a bundle of carpentry supplies. With oh so many knobs. Oh shit, I didn't realise you could get all the people who haven't left a like on this video into one rucksack. Better sort that out if you haven't done so already. Deciding I've taken enough damage, I head back with a little feral in chase. But not wanting to whip a gun out this close to home, I'm gonna have to use my second greatest weapon, my arse. Ladies and gentlemen, the feral killer strikes again. Ba -ba -ba -bam. I drop off my two sacks of building materials and start the build of the infirmary. And after waiting a very quick minute for it to build, I give Nichols a rest and take over as Hastings, who agrees to go chat to the scrappers to see what they need. But first, you gotta look after yourselves. Let's go collect some building materials from the warehouse nearby. My main priority right now is getting the infirmary upgraded to level Two. That way we can all start healing passively. I need another sack or two of building materials and a couple more chemicals. But first I gotta deal with a considerable amount of dickheads. Who doesn't love the smell of burning bloater guts in the morning? I take out the crowd, simple enough. I then enter the warehouse where I show off why I'm the greatest stealth player of all time. I'm like a fart in an elevator. You suspect I'm there from the smell, but you couldn't catch or see me even if you wanted to. I find a sack of building materials as well as high valuable cigarettes. Oh shit, I just realised how I like prison and the end of the world is. Everyone is after a shit and a trade in cigarettes for currency. I also search the military stash around the back and find an ammo resource as well as a sidearm. So I quickly head back to base to drop off all the loot. I then have a quick check to see my survivors are consuming six food a day. Well that is way too much time to enact some rationing. I then head out on foot to do some looting around the local area, keeping things on foot to stay healthy and to lower my diesel bill. If Greta's still about, she'd be well impressed. I find a sack of coffee beans in the house across the street, but weirdly not in the kitchen. Who the hell keeps coffee in the living room? I then pop back to drop off all of my loot, and then we can finally make our way to the scrappers. And I'm just thinking, do you think they're called the scrappers because they're really into recycling or fighting? Let me know what you think in the comment section. Either way, I get to their home, but my loud engine may have attracted the locals. But before they cause a bigger issue, I run in and give them the play examples they're after. As usual, to say thank you, they give me some fuel supplies. But I'm not done yet. I want to see exactly what they have worth trading. Unfortunately, they're in the middle of a little scrap. I guess we have the answer to the earlier question. It's okay to burn your friends. Oh my god, that's quite a lot of them. Ah, uh, no, get away from 
from me. Once the flames dissipate, I go in and gunslinger some faces off, but it's not enough, so I revert back to type. We're going back on fire. But it doesn't matter what I do, it seems the crowds will just keep growing. I think this is going to become an issue long term. Effectively though, right, all I'm doing right now is helping them farm plague samples, which is exactly what they wanted, right? That is the plus side of using the version 2 mod. You'll never run low on plague samples. Quite a lot of them on that side. Jesus Christ, they just keep coming. Like 14 year old me after I discovered my penis. Sorry, I was a late bloomer. I'm going in stealthy and I'm going to take them from, from the rear. Oh, look at that. That was that was good. That was good. Unfortunately, they've all stormed through the bay window. I guess I'll just burn your house down for the third time. I eliminate the final Z, then go into trade. Oh, look, they've got a toolkit. I need the toolkit. Other than the toolkit, there's nothing really worth having at the moment. But I'd say fighting all those hordes was worth it just for the one toolkit. At least now I don't have to worry about bursting into flames every time I go around a corner. Then for the first time, I make my way into plague territory, which is basically the entire map in this mod. Surprisingly, I managed to avoid the crowds and safely climb the nearby billboard to do a bit of scouting. Dead. And rather surprisingly, there's only two arts in this area. But most importantly, there's a barbecue restaurant just outside of Plague Territory. You can probably work out exactly what we gotta do. Ouch, that's gonna hurt the ankles. I drive over to the restaurant, but we're now situated between two hordes. And one of them have partnered up with a feral. Do I let Hitch a ride? Because now I can do that and he. Oh, yep, yeah, yes, I can. Oh no, oh no, oh no. And this is why you always wear a seatbelt. Perfectly under control. I have things under control. It is absolutely fine. Glad that's taken care of. Yeah, me too. I then turn the restaurant into an outpost and obviously loot the place. That smoke bomb will definitely come in handy. But a play cart is now awake and sending wandering hordes towards us. I'm gonna have to defend my outpost. I load up with frags thanks to the warlord boom. Unfortunately, I don't have enough fuel resources to activate my outpost defenses. Well, technically I do, but they're in the back of my car. So we're doing this the old fashioned way. I start by trying to lob a molly into an exploded bloater, but before I can send it, I gotta dodge a feral attack. I managed to move the feral's armor before dodging another plague zombie, then toss a molly behind me to try and slow the the flow of the crowds. And one more barrel roll forward gives me the space I need to give the final headshot to the feral. Right, you fuck off over that way. After dropping my flammable is mainly the armored zombies that are left. So we do what we gotta do. We do the three B's of battle. Barrel rolls, beat downs and blasting. Yes. One in doubt, just obliterate everything that moves. So after I've eliminated the wandering horde's threat, I head back to base to unload the fuel resources I've picked up along my travels. I unload the loot and activate the mines. Now we have a really good safe space around our outpost. And seeing as Stuart has the demolition skill, these mines will be activated for three hours instead of the usual one and a half. Which means we have plenty of time to loot the immediate area for all of its resources. Look at it, look at it, look at it. Isn't it a thing of beauty? And this isn't gamer advice, but always reverse your car into the bay. That way you don't have to worry about reversing out blind. I can then search the tartan mart completely safe, although I don't find any more food resources. Just 9mm rounds apparently. The mine defences turn out to be a brilliant way to farm plague samples, seen as the hordes are so large. They often wander in without me even attracting them, which I also do as well because that shit is hilarious, even when I singe an eyebrow. I then spend the rest of the night looting the garden centre, the petrol station, the chemical thing, obviously taking breaks whenever I need to to listen to some banging rock music and to enjoy the fireworks. Ah, uh, look at that. Oh shit. This is a fantastic way of farming plague samples. I got so many plague samples from that. That's actually really impressive. I also search the grocery store across the road and the medical center next door. And whenever I get into a spot of trouble I simply can't handle with my fists, well, technically my hammer slash knife, I just run back to my landmines and let them deal with the problem. Yes, that's what I like to see. Everybody follow me now. After the full night of looting, we've got plenty of resources. And I've even got enough chemicals to upgrade the infirmary to level two. Now we can recover health massively and Hastings being knackered. I take over as Stuart, then realize my issue. I've used up all of the bloody building materials. All I need is one sack just to prevent the infirmary from breaking down. So firstly I head back to the warehouse we looted earlier and make it our second outpost. Now we are gaining one building mat a day, this should be enough to prevent breakdown. But just in case I want one additional sack just to be safe. I know of two unfinished houses fairly nearby that will have everything I need. But seeing as one is heavily infested, I decide to go a different route. But don't get it twisted, this is still a very dangerous mission. We're heading towards a Dewey's Hardware deep into Plague Terror. But in all honesty, I didn't know how deep into plague territory I was going. Oh, oh, oh. Oh my lord. There's five play cards by here? What the shit? Well, this mission just become a lot more dangerous. It's too dark and I'm not well equipped enough to be taken on play cards. Especially five black ones in a row. I make a start by scouting the area from the billboard nearby. And then it's time to get to sneak in. The last thing I want to do is wake up another heart and make our growing infestation problem even bigger. So remaining stealthy is the optimum strat. I enter the hardware store and start searching very slowly. In the first container, I find absent. In the second, I find loads of 
shit, none of which I need. In the third, I find a molly and some seeds, which will definitely come in handy, but is not what I'm looking for. So that leaves my fourth and final container. Ah, oh, for fuck's sake. Well, this has been a massive, dangerous waste of time. It's probably for the best to get out of here. So with the sun rising and the stench of failure on our breath, we make our way back to base. Seeing as there's 72 play carts, we've got to get cracking and use the most of the daylight as possible. But seeing as this will be my first black cart since the curveball's beta, I'm not sure exactly how best to prepare. I figure I should be safe with enough artillery to overthrow a third world government. If we struggle to take down this heart with everything we're packing, we could be in some serious trouble. And for once, I'm not talking about my driving. Not a great start, is it? And with the car right side up, I make my way over to the first play cart. Knowing things could get very explosive, I make sure to park the car a good distance away, but still close enough that I can climb onto if I need it. I thought this would be a great heart to start with, seeing as there's a convenient platform I can stand on and shoot it through the window. I'm also pretty sure I'm high enough to avoid any bloater clouds. Okay, so let's get shit started with 3350 cal rounds. It takes 2750 cal ammo and over 1 minute 15 seconds, and that's just the first phase. Okay, right, we got a first phase. And seeing as we now have crowds piling through the window to, well, I don't know, defend it or something, I toss my first molly to burn them all up. At the very least, it's very pretty. I then put the last few 50 cal rounds into it, and after re-equipping my Stormbringer, it's time to go for a little run. I headbutt my way through a window, hoping the crowds will follow, and lob a remote grenade before running in to try and hit it. Well, that didn't go to plan. Seeing as the crowds are already getting too much, I dip out and detonate the explosives, and dash back to my car to allow my stamina to regain. And once Stuart has caught her breath, we get ready to go back in. And hopefully this time we can use the explosives to clear more of the crowd. I dip into the corner and start smacking shit just as zombies are piling through the window. And I barrel roll my way through all their legs to try and drop some explosives. Well, that should have at least killed some bloody zombies, at least. It certainly did, but I'd say nowhere near enough. And while it's just me and it, I get some power swings into it. Then as the crowds start to reappear, I start rolling about to allow the maximum capacity in the room before I drop a molly. And we're going, fire. I then exit the front, closing the door behind me to allow the maximum amount of burnage. In theory, at least. I then burst back through and start whacking the shit out of the play cart. Without a doubt, need a heavy weapon to be dealing with this. The last three Zeds enter the room, so I blast them with the rifle. And finally get some good one-on-one -on -one time with the play cart. High on a copious amount of caffeine over the next minute, I repeatedly batter the hearth and a few more Zeds that have decided to turn up. And that finally completes the second phase. I still have to repeat this process another time, and that would just be one out of 72 play carts. I think I might need a better strategy long term. The cloud is still active and a few Zeds have come through the window, so I drop another frag. But that might have been a mistake as it's attracted another nearby horde. So I run back inside and start hitting it again, in the hope I can get them all in the same room and blow them up with one frag. In the end, I throw myself out of the window and toss an explosive behind me. And while that does a decent job of clearing the room, there's still some stragglers outside I've got to handle. I can say for certain the one thing I've learned is it's so much easier to be silent. But with the final zombie taken care of and caffeine still coursing through my veins, I go back inside and start power hitting the bitch, even if I am ankle deep in zombies right now. I repeat the same strat I used for the second phase, but this time only managed to beat the shit out of it for 30 seconds before a screamer turns up. And seeing it's one of those squirty ones, I throw myself out of the window and shoot it from safety. Then it's back to beating the thing with my heavy weapon. But unfortunately that won't be for long as the screamer and gunshot have attracted more knobheads. As they start to gather I drop another frag and dip, but that's only enough to clear the first wave. There's plenty more piling through that window. I toss one final frag and dip out the front, and thankfully that's enough. Oh we got it! Holy shit! Not only was that insanely tough, but it also used up a lot of resources. Even without explosives that was a lot of stamina items. And there's another 71 of these things I've got to eliminate. And the only freak we had spawn was actually a screamer. It's fair to say things are gonna get pretty crazy as we increase our standing. I then finish off the last of the knobheads that have gathered, because I want to be able to loot this big bitch. Alright, so nothing to shout about, but free loot is free loot. Assuming you count spending the last 15 minutes the way I have, as cost free. I make my way back to base and unload, then notice a siege site building nearby. A level 1 siege site that turns into a level 2 just as I get there. Great. But that doesn't worry me, one firebomb sorts that right out. Get wrecked, you bitch. But hang on a second, level 2 siege sites usually have ferals in, don't they? Yes. Yes, they do. I collect the ammo the feral dropped, then head inside the shed to see if there's anything else zombies could have dropped. Oh god, nope, just a, just a bloater, just a bloater, don't worry about the bloater. My lord, that's a lot of zombies. Holy shit. I get in the car to make my escape, but not very far as I want to see if the enclave next door have any building materials for sale. Uh, yes, I know there's, I have just sort of dragged multiple hordes to your home. Do you think I could, nope, you don't want to talk to me? But sadly, they're not in the mood for business dealings. You're on your own there, love. You're on your own. But hey, don't look at me like I'm the bad guy. I just mowed down like 30% of the horde that I attracted. 
weird. I start climbing a billboard nearby just as the bullet benefactor curve will activate, which is really handy considering how much ammo I need to take down play carts right now. I then come up with the genius plan of collecting building materials for one of these unfinished houses. One of them's infested with juggernauts and ferals, and the other is right next door to the one that's infested with juggernauts and ferals. So overall, this is a lose-lose situation, but when needs must, you gotta make sacrifices. And for once, I just hope I'm not sacrificing human lives. There's a couple of zombies in the unfinished house, and I'm gonna have to deal with them quieter than silent if I don't wanna have to deal with that infestation. On second thoughts, I think it might already be too late. Okay. Oh, Jesus! Oh yeah, I'd say it's definitely too late. I tried to escape, but the bastard tackles me for the second time, and my plague meter just keeps ticking up. I managed to put some distance between me and the smackhead, then Gunslinger can deal with a little prick's armor. But that much unsuppressed gunfire near that infestation is only gonna lead to trouble. It looks like I'm going back to sneaking about to try and outsmart them. Or I could just toss a firebomb into the crowd and hope the flames do the work for me. Different strats for different twats. I mean, I don't know what I was thinking, I'll be honest. Well, that sums up like 85% of all of your plans. Come on, spread! Let the fire spread! That's the way! And that sums up the other 15%. I managed to confuse the rest by running through some gardens and hopping some fences, and I find exactly what I'm after in the first container I search. And I'm almost certain there would be a second in here somewhere, but maybe it's best not to get greedy. Where did he come from? Oh my god, there's another juggernaut! What the fuck? So I sprint back to my car and drive away. Oof! Well, that was quite a dangerous mission, but I do feel that we should be taking on another play card, which is exactly what I'm gonna do. First, I collect the supply crate the bullet benefactor left, all things I'm sure I can put to good use. Then I head to the ammo shop just around the corner from base and turn it into my third outpost. But at that point, it's time to give Stuart the rest, so I swap to Hastings. And this little blonde bombshell is about to take on two black hearts. I grab as much equipment as I suspect I'll need, then make our way over to the scene of battle. The reason I'm trying to claim hearts on this side of the map is because I want the brewery just up the road as my next base. So high on ketamine, I charge into the belly of the beast and start battering the bitch like it's dead in Jonathan Majors. And my stratured is just to hit it as many times and as powerfully as possible, but unfortunately I get bit from my blind spot. I'd say that's probably a pretty shit start. So once he's beaten off to completion, I drop a rocket pod and retreat. You get these from the Red Talon Prestige Trader, and one of Hastings or Stuart add them in their inventory when I pull them out of the legacy pool. And while they won't do a lot of damage to the heart, they'll do a really good job of making sure there's nothing else alive in that barn. And with everything cleared, I run in and start battering it, and this time the phase comes much quicker. It's almost as if the 50 cal is not the way to go on this thing. Ah, the molly, you prick. In comparison to the first heart, I've been proper stealthy, but even so, hordes have been attracted to our location. It's almost as if the rocket pods I set off were super loud or something. Nah, that can't be right. I tell you what, I'll just drop another to be safe. And with them going off nowhere near the heart, I need to do everything I can to filter the hordes through those explosions for maximum impact. And the best way to do that is with multiple roly polies. As I come around the backside of the barn, I spot a screamer and take him out. The last thing I want is him calling more mates, especially when we're doing such a good job of being stealthy. I then go in and batter it for another 30 seconds, doing my best to take out all the stragglers that have turned up late. And that's when I spot a bloat that charge in towards me. But unfortunately, the fucker can't hold his load and blows too soon. <clears throat> can't relate. I toss a napalm grenade, but the explosion just confirms what I already knew. The cloud was not close enough. I then heavy hit it for another minute until it starts to phase. Oh, no, 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 no. Remember, the gas cloud is bigger and can set you on fire if you're not quick enough. But to be honest, I probably should have been more worried about my own actions. When will I ever learn? I continuously fight off the hordes while the gases spew out of the heart. But as more and more approach me, it's clear I can't take them all on in hand-to-hand -hand combat. I am gonna napalm. Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, I'm about to get burst on flames. I managed to avoid burning myself and another bloater burst into flames, but nowhere where they could do any proper damage. That should at least eliminate all the zombies. Well, maybe not quite all of them, but it certainly did a bloody good job. And once they're all dead, I go back in and start hitting it again, very conscious about how close I am to infection. I'm basically a Plague Zed sneeze away from becoming very unwell. So as I'm sure you can imagine, the last thing I want to see is another bloody horde coming towards me. So I drop more frags to eliminate the threat, even if that does cover me in zombies. Guts. Shame that doesn't work like scent block, eh? But they still continue to come, so I drop another frag. Frag it out, frag it out, frag it out. I get warned that a feral's in the area just as the explosion goes off. Great, feral, where's the feral? I stand my ground, keep my cool, and four headshots gets the job done. I'm sure there's plenty of people out there who could have got the job done in three, but there's nothing wrong with a cheeky double tap. I'm grateful to say a final 20 seconds of battering gets the job done. Yes! Jesus! I have plenty of time to loot it and immediately use that first aid kit. I may have sorted out my health problems, but I'm still a fly's dick 
away from infection. But thankfully I've been collecting play examples like the Pokemon cards. So I head back home and use the infirmary to activate infection therapy. I'll eliminate my partial infection for just free play examples. Simply put, that's probably gonna be the way I survive this playthrough. As I'm sure you can imagine at this point I'm starting to run low on supplies. Most worryingly is my lack of stamina items. So I grab my final five stims and two stacks of grenades and head back out into the field. I climb the billboard across from the base I want and do a little bit of scouting about. The base is still threatened by two hearts, two awake and two asleep. The two awake are south of us, the two asleep are north. Well, it would make sense to take on the awake ones to help prevent the spread of infestation. So I head into the fire station to have a little scope about. In all honesty, my hope here was that it was in a place I could block off with my car and I could get a cheap victory. If only I was that lucky. After eliminating the few Zeds inside, I find the heart in the gents bathroom. And seeing as there's no obvious cheesy strat, just start beating the bloody thing. But it doesn't take very long at all for the crowds to catch up to me. So I drop a frag and roly poly out of the room as I'll have more room to fight whatever is left over from the explosion. But while I'm fighting them all off, there's one thing I ever noticed that could be my downfall. A bloater is approaching. I try entering back into the room to get more hits off, but the crowds are simply too much so I'm gonna have to whip out the gun. The one thing I've noticed about this mod is bullets are better left for the undead and it's so much more beneficial to attack hearts with a heavy weapon. That's when it happens. Oh my god. Oh my god, no, no, no! Shit! I can't move! If I move, wait! Hang on! Oh my god! This, this is mental! Right, well, oh my god, he's dead! No idea how to explain that, we need an action replay. Oh my god, no, no, no! I managed to shoot the bloater before it gets too close, but its cloud is blocking my only exit. I can't move! At the same time, the play cart starts phasing, and a second bloater comes around the corner. The fire from the heart ignites the bloater, making room for my escape. And I can roly-poly my way out, surprisingly not in a life-threatening condition. Right, well, oh my god, he's dead! He's dead! If anyone has a better explanation, please let me know in the comment section. The only thing confusing me is why the play cart started phasing so quickly. Then I get surprised attacked by a bitch hiding out in a room. Oh, oh, you twat! Simply refusing to die, Hastings throws herself out of the window and over the wall. She can then inject the cure, thank fuck I brought two. I decide against trying to loot it, seeing how dangerous that room is right now, and instead make our way to the next heart. Sadly, this isn't one of those barns that'll allow me to use a cheese strat. So after leaving my car a safe distance away from explosive damage, I once again run in and start battering it high on Adderall. Gratefully, this area is much quieter and I'm able to get the first phase completed in just 30 seconds seconds of heavy hits. Okay, no, 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 no. Then while the heart is facing, I take on the hordes that are coming completely hand to hand. For once, I'm trying to be quiet to not attract any more trouble. We're trying to stay silent, so I'm not using guns. I know, it's a new thing I'm trying out. Although the hordes that are coming seem to be a bit too big to take on with one woman and her metal stick, so it's back to fragging. I think that really hurt it. Yeah, probably, mate. Probably, probably, probably. After looping around, I go back to the smack and roll tactic. Then once the crowds are big enough, I drop a frag. Obviously, Molly's would be better, but you gotta use what you've got. I then use Gunslinger to finish off the rest, then 20 seconds of repeated heavy hits before I gotta dodge out and take out any knobheads who've been attracted. That strat gets repeated twice before we complete the second phase. With the sun nearly set, I feel slightly rushed, so try going full auto with the Stormbringer. That was arguably a terrible decision. More and more zombies are heading to my location, and Hastings has decided she needs a nap. I do some roly-polies back through the barn, not realising the gas is still active, but also drop a frag behind me to help clear out some of those hordes. But there's still so many about it's actually kind of ridiculous. I spot a bloater on his way and try to coax him inside, but the only thing I've got that could possibly ignite him is frag grenades, and I'm not even sure if that's possible. The bloater makes its way into the barn as I dodge through all the crowds. Come on, bloater's gonna pop, bloater's gonna pop! So I drop a frag grenade, but it's nowhere near the bloater. It trips and falls over, nowhere near the blast radius, so I'm forced to throw another. It might have done no damage on the play card, but it certainly cleared the barn and allowed me to get back into it. Then finally, after another 50 seconds of battering and dodging stragglers... Come on! You're so teasing! Oh my god. I can then quickly collect the loot and finally get the bloody hell out of here. Still need to take out another two hearts before the base I want is safe, but that shit can wait till daytime. I finally get back home and unload my spoils of war, but something seems off with the community. I speak to Nichols who tells me he's getting sick, but not with blood plague. A bloody cold! But that can wait till the next episode. If you want to see a full playthrough of me taking on all 72 hearts, I'm gonna need a thousand likes to commit to that. A second episode is already recorded, so that'll be coming anyway, but a thousand likes for a full playthrough. I highly recommend this mod to anyone who's found Lethal Zone getting a bit easy. Shout out to the mod creator Dark Wolves, and as always, the mod will be linked in the description. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.